Uh, and welcome to Chief Executives in CEO of Chief CEO Executives in Transition. Welcome, 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 welcome. Uh, the, the CEO Executive in Transition is designed to support Chief Operating Officers in these in these uncertain and very challenging times. Uh, and we're our goal is just to get the CEOs back to their next job. And uh, it's. Uh, we want to see everybody landing great new CO jobs. Uh, the initiative aligns well with our Chief Operating Officer Business Forum, CO Forum uh, uh, core values because we are expressly for and advocates of the Chief Operating Officer and Second in Command Executives. There are some guidelines uh, that I'd just like to knock, tell you about quickly. Just first off, meeting courtesy, let's keep everybody uh, 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 courtesy to mute every uh, every time you're not talking and you're not there, not not uh, participating in something because we want uh, we want that to be quiet and easy for people to follow. Business first. Uh, if you casual, if you need to go anywhere, need to do anything, do it. Uh, just come back and uh, join in and be a part of it as as it works in, in the flow. Uh, business language and no politics is sort of obvious. Uh, this meeting will be recorded and we will be putting it in the uh, mining network uh, a couple days after the meeting is over. Uh, and keep your job prospects confidential. We just don't want anybody poaching. Uh, and uh, please also feel free to post uh, any questions on the chat as you go through the meeting. Uh, let me introduce who's on the, in the meeting here. First off, Laura Weichel. CEO Forum second in command for 13 years and is our executive vice president. Based in greater Atlanta, she's responsible for leading the many and various activities of the Chief Operating Officer Business Forum, CEO Forum organization, and leadership overseeing all chapters, chapter directors, and members. She is a wonderful, upbeat, visionary colleague who creates extraordinary outcomes and successes. We're also joined by Fiona Murray, who is relatively new to the CEO Forum and has taken a big part of this chapter of Chief Executives in Transition. And she's the go-to person for that. And we are so delighted Fiona has stepped up and willing to uh, really make this initiative a terrific initiative for all of us. We have two thought leaders for the session today. Margaret Ritchie, as Minnesota's first triple qualified Gallup coach, Margaret's passion is to create great teams that value each individual and accomplish all they set out to do, from executive to mid-management teams, project to cross-functional teams. Her love of people sees the potential in each one and the huge synergy that these teams possess when they work well together. Margaret's additional work with entrepreneurs helps them understand and accelerate their business building talents while helping them acknowledge their blind spots, gaps, and weaknesses. This knowledge helps them grow their businesses faster and stronger. And, and Margaret is also the chapter director of the Twin Cities, uh, Minneapolis, St. Paul. Uh, and uh, we're just delighted to have Margaret back in her uh, time with us. Chris O'Rourke is the other thought leader today. He has over 25 years of experience in global operation roles in the Fortune 50 client and for Fortune 50 clients. He's traveled through Europe, Asia, Africa for clients including Nestle, Kimberly Clark, Salesforce, and MasterCard to understand local community cultures, needs, and business opportunities. Chris calls himself a glue person who is who is able to bring people together from diverse cultures, sectors, and responsibilities to enthusiastically and proactively solve problems. Chris loves learning and teaching and has been a mentor to graduate students for the last seven years and has coached over a hundred first time marathon runners. In his spare time, Chris loves recording his own music and teaching his kids to play the guitar. Welcome. Welcome, Margaret and, and Chris, and take it away. Thank you so much, Bill, for the introduction. Thank you all for joining us today. We're very excited to have you with us. Uh, so I am Chris O'Rourke, and, and I am a former COO. 
from Thought Matter. I myself am in transition. I've been in transition since about March. Uh, so I am on this journey with you all uh, and hoping to share some of my experiences and hoping to learn from you in what I think will be a wonderful session. And as Bill says, I am a, not only a marathon coach, but I run over 50 marathons myself. And I'm hoping to sprinkle in some thoughts about my own running experiences and how they relate to the job search. Uh, and I'm delighted to turn the uh, focus over now to my great colleague and friend, Margaret. Hi everyone, uh, and thanks Chris and Bill. Um, so this is uh, fun that we get to introduce ourselves in a different kind of manner. Um, I was in transition. Um, I've been through the whole, everything that you've been through. Um, I was the COO of a global toy company. And during an industry problem, uh, we had to have a 25% layoff and I was one of the layoffs. Um, it's been a hard journey, but at the same time, I think we have learned a lot um, through everything we've been through. So Chris and I are like the perfect people to talk about this topic. Okay, next one. Oh, next slide, there we go. Um, so today we are gonna be talking a little bit about marathon running, where we're equating a running of a marathon to uh, what we have to do in order to get our next position. So I love that Chris came up with this uh, theme and it plays really well with what we're gonna do today. So we're gonna talk about um, how to get in condition, understanding and figuring out the emotional uh, problems that come along with transition. Um, it's a, a topic that we don't normally talk about. Uh, usually people are very focused on the process of getting a next job and, and getting your, your LinkedIn profile up and running well and, and getting your CV all set. But we're gonna actually be talking about uh, what happens in your mind um, during this time and then, and then plowing that into uh, figuring out what you need to do uh, for the next long haul until you get your next position. Then we're gonna be talking about um, acceptance of the emotional toil, um, is, which is different from the emotional toll. So we'll talk about both things. Um, and then we're gonna share a practical framework for us as we gear up to, to get our next positions. Um, and then finally, we're just gonna like, you know, help, help you find the headspace to find your next position. So we're gonna, we're gonna go at that point, um, get started on the marathon. So one of the things that I personally uh, was trying to figure out was why did we call this session navigating emotional toil instead of navigating emotional toll? I'd never heard of toil, frankly. Um, and so, you know, doing a little bit of research on it, they're two completely different things. And so we want to address both things in this session. So emotional toil is something that you are left with um, inside, your, inside your mind um, after a traumatic event. It's the, the really tough price that you've paid. Um, you know, during this transition period, you've had a lot to overcome. Um, but part of the thing that we don't really talk about because it doesn't seem to be, um, it seems like you, you always have to be strong, you know, but we actually want you to start to feel the emotions that come through um, your journey here. And so what we're gonna talk about is, you know, the, the, the ways that you can help uh, you to take care of the emotional toll that's happening in your life. So there's a lot of suffering and damage and it may leave you feeling that you're inadequate for another position or that there's something wrong with you and that is not the case at all. Some of the things that we can help you with right now is, uh, and that will help you in the future is I want you to be, um, I want you to really understand the emotions that are at the core of yourself. And so to do that, it's really important that you start to tell your story and tell that to, to at least two people that really care about you, the people that are your rah-rah section. Um, everyone's story is completely different, but every time 
we retell the story, it lessens the pain. And so it gets you into a better frame of mind when you're ready to be interviewed by potential new companies. Um, you can't move forward until you've moved past that last suffering that you've had. I want you to recognize your sense of loss. I think that's a big thing. It's like we can't negate that there's not loss. I mean, we lost companies that we loved with people that we love to work with and all sorts of different things that um, you, you need to recognize before you can actually start to heal. So as you're realizing the emotions that you're experiencing, don't tell yourself that they don't matter, but we want you to be able to start working through them. So we're gonna give you some capabilities and resources at the end that will help you to do those things. And then when we talk about um, the suffering and damage that happens with you, we also want to acknowledge that this affects your family at the same time. So, you know, part of it is, do you have a great support network at home? And I'm sure your, your partners, your best friends are, are uh, awesomely walking this road with you. But part of what you're thinking about is, how is this gonna affect my family finances? Um, and so having a, a place uh, that you can start to talk about those with your, your partner um, or just yourself if you're uh, by yourself um, is, a, is a great way to try to figure out what is what needs to happen next. And then how do we keep it from becoming a physical issue? Because we know that suffering and, and um, traumatic events like this, the loss of a job, if, if we don't uh, look at the anxiety that it creates in our lives, it can sometimes um, blossom into a physical issue. And so we wanna help you navigate that as well. So emotional toil, on the other hand, is something that you're gonna work through daily to get to the other side. But before you can do that, we need you to take a look at the emotional toll from the layoff. And so those things that we looked at in the last slide are actually going to be able to help you and fit you up so that you get ready for this next emotional toil process. It is gonna include some emotional um, things to work through during the process, but at the end of the day, what you need to do is, is heal from both things. And then to understand that the marathon that's coming up is just that uh, until you find your next position, which is actually gonna be even better than your last one. And so when I start coaching my marathon runners, most of them have never run a marathon before and they're doing it because they want the challenge or they want to get in shape or their friends are doing it or they're raising money for a foundation. Um, but I sit them down at the very, very beginning and I'm very honest with them. You know, running a marathon is exceptionally hard. Um, it's, it takes a lot of effort, it takes a lot of training, it hurts. Uh, I don't know if you've ever seen someone with five bloody toenails, but it's not an exciting experience. It's, it, it's a physical and mental uh, challenge that is not to be taken lightly. Uh, and it's very similar to, I think, what we're all dealing with in terms of dealing with the emotional toil of the job search. Um, you'll have fear, you'll have anxiety, uncertainty, fatigue, sadness, stress, Oftentimes, uh, all of these emotions within the same hour, uh, as is the case with a marathon. Oftentimes, you're in the marathon and you feel great. You've just had a great mile. You feel perfectly hydrated. You're in your pace. And then the very next mile, you, you're in an uphill and you fall behind and you keep telling yourself, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. And so managing those emotions and managing, managing these very sort of human uh, feelings is very much part of not only life, but certainly running a marathon and finding finding a job. Um, and it's, it's certainly made more difficult because we are in the midst of a global pandemic. And I don't think we can discount the fact that you know, this is a, a once in a century pandemic. It's impacting all of us across the world. It's not something that any of us have any training in, in the navigating. Um, and we just need to recognize that that is an additional uh, complexity that needs to be considered and taken care of and, and uh, heated as we kind of navigate our job search. So 
we want to make sure that the all all of us on this call feel that you know you're you're human being having these emotions is very normal it's very natural uh, you're not alone uh, we've we're all on this call together there's many people out there that are navigating a job search currently um, and like I tell all of my marathon runners you're going to make it you might not make it in the time that you wanted to make it in you might have to walk part of the time. You might tell yourself over and over and over again, like, why am I doing this? This is crazy. But if you put one foot in front of the other, stick with your plan, stick with your training, you will get to the finish line. So we will share our ideas. We've got uh, a, what we call sort of four um, guide rails that we want to talk about, but um, we don't have all the answers. So we want to, when we're going to jump into breakout groups in a minute, we would love to hear about how you're managing your own job search and the emotional toil that comes from that. And we want to just be, um, repeat the sort of mantra, you know, our success uh, in both work and life is, is mutually dependent on one another. So we want to hear from you. We want to understand the challenges. We want to help you with our perspectives. And again, sort of collectively, we, we really are confident that we're all going to get to the finish line. Um, so again, we're going to go through very quickly these four guideposts. You can call it a framework. You can call it a guidepost. Um, these are things that we put together that we hope gives you, again, just sort of a, a rough um, sort of guideline to help you get through the job search. Um, and the first thing is you know, get in condition. So that's build and stick with your plan. And we've talked about that a lot in the earlier sessions in terms of your LinkedIn profile, in terms of creating your personal brand. Um, you have to create that plan. But this is more than just those practical elements. These are some of the emotional things that you need to really get, get in place. So what's your personal mantra? What do you believe in? What do you believe? What's your goal for your job search? Is it a certain number of interviews a week? Is it a certain number of industries that you want to connect into? Um, you need to identify what you would need during this marathon. So that's a nice place to work, hot coffee all the time, a supporting friend to meet up on a Friday, whatever it is, what do you need prior to getting the job search going? What do you need that's going to help you get through this? Um, what's your pace, right? If you train for a marathon at an eight minute pace, you don't get to that start line and then run a six minute pace. What's your comfortable pace? You know, maybe that's you work from six to 10 in the morning and then you take a break. Or maybe that's you work from nine to 12, you have a two hour lunch, and then you take a break. What is the pace that you can stick to as you're getting into your job search? Um, and then finally, how are you going to rest and how are you going to recover? That's key in terms of training for a marathon. It's also important as you think about the job search. When are you going to give your time to rest, to read a book, to recover, to take a nap, just to give yourself that mental and emotional and physical space to recover so that you can pick up the next day and start again. Phase two of this framework is, is really get ready. So that's all about mindset, right? So this is all about, I've signed up for the marathon. I'm getting to that starting line. I got to convince myself that I'm going to get to the finish line, right? So this is all about conviction and confidence. This is about conviction. This is all about self-belief. That's about saying, yes, I am going to push myself. I am confident. I believe I can get to the finish line. And confidence is important as part of that, but confidence as it relates to, I believe I have the skills, I believe I have the capabilities, I have the confidence to not only start this journey, but I have the confidence to connect with people, build relationships and find that next role. And if you don't have that confidence as you're getting into this race, you need to figure out how to develop that confidence. And again, this is where um, some of the next um, elements of the framework really help in terms of building that confidence. And look, prepare for failure. One of the things that I've been really struggling with personally uh, as I've been on my journey uh, is getting ghosted. I've reached out to a number of people that have been, you know, friends, old friends or, or contacts of friends just to say, hey, I'm, I'm looking, you know, can I network with you? Can I connect with you? Do you have a moment to give me? And people are busy and everyone's dealing with the, the challenges of the current times. And Oftentimes uh, there's no malice behind it, but people just don't respond. Um, and that's been something for me personally that I've been really, really struggling with. So understanding that, that failure will come, but not letting it undermine you is really pivotal as you kind of continue on this marathon and continue on this journey. 
And finally, again, going back to the idea of navigating the emotional toll and the navigating the emotional toil is learning how to self heal, making, you know, when you do have those moments where you're not feeling confident, when you're hitting that uphill, you know, when you're really struggling and that fear and that anxiety comes back, you need to make sure that every day you have some time in your schedule just to heal and relax and to tell yourself that you're going to get again to the finish line. You just need a break. And I'm going to pass it back over to Margaret for the next two guideposts. Good. Thank you. Um, so the next set of guideposts is to get set to how to build your support network. So um, first of all, the, one of the best things that you can do is to identify friends and family and people that are in your personal network or professional network that you can rely upon. Um, this, I can't state enough because there's gonna be days when it just seems like everything is uphill and you don't have the legs to go up the complete hill. And so you need to be able to rely upon those people who are within your, your sphere of influence and, and they can bolster you sometimes. Um, you want to surround yourself with positive people. Um, that rah-rah section that I talked about before is really, really important. Um, on some of the days when you do get ghosted or when things just don't mesh together like you thought they would, um, you need to be able to reach out to those people who you've identified um, that will actually lift you up. The hard part is that sometimes we have to get rid of or minimize the impact of negative people in our lives though. And sometimes that might be really tough because they're in your family. I mean, you might have a, a partner that doesn't understand you know, what you're going through or you might have some other family members or some very close friends that don't understand the emotions or the needs that you have at this time to actually get that next position. And so, um, you know, for our family, you know, and our close friends, we can't really get rid of them. But we have to find ways of um, almost uh, not listening as, as well um, to them as we would to the people who are very positive influences for us. So that's kind of a big, a big deal for you. Um, the next thing is to find a coach. And this doesn't have to be a literal coach. It can be uh, a family member or a very close friend or a mentor. If you have, um, and, and I would encourage all of you in this journey um, to create a personal board of directors actually with some um, people that you can go to when you're in need and let them know that you're gonna be coming to them when you're in need and they can help you navigate uh, during these times when you might not have um, someone to talk with and they can coach you. And then the last thing is identify the fuel that will keep you going. What is it that, um, that makes you light up? Um, so for me, it's reading a book um, or going for a walk um, or doing any number of things that just make me feel good. If I'm in the process of doing a lot of research on the companies that I'm, I'm working on, that's fun for me. Uh, but at a certain point, if you're doing research all day, you need to be able to just get away and, and go and refresh your mind. And so that, that's, those are the things that you need to get your support network going, even if it's um, getting something that you need. Um, and, then, and then the last part, and this is the go part. This is where we start the huge marathon. Up to this point, we've been getting ready for all of it. But now we're actually going to be working, working our plan, doing our marathon. And so your first thing is to, you know, you're figuring out your plan of action and you're going to get it in your mind that we are going to work this plan and we're going to stay the course. We're going to finish the marathon no matter how long it takes, no matter how um, discouraged we might get, we're going to complete it and we're going to get to this new beautiful place that's going to be your next perfect place to work. Um, so set aside time for yourself. And, and we're going to talk about a couple of these different things. Um, so set, a, set aside some time on Monday mornings before you get into the fray of, of trying to um, find the next position. You want to review your week ahead. Um, I'm sure that you know your, your schedule is kind of starting to get a little wonky sometimes if you're starting to have back-to-back -back, um, 
informational interviews. And so you have to always uh, be prepping for the next in informational interview, but then you also have to be digesting, you know, an interview that you just had. So getting your ideas out and, and seeing what's ahead for the week is really necessary. And then, um, so take some time every Friday afternoon to think about what you did this week, uh, what worked for you and how you could figure out something different if something didn't work. Um, so that's when we talk about course correction. That's, that's a part of this whole plan. It's, um, it's about realizing what worked, what didn't, and then figuring out um, something different for the next week. Um, you can uh, figure out all sorts of different things that will actually help you. And then just adjust the plan. As you take a look at that last week that you had and the things that worked, how many informationals you had, maybe you had like seven informationals in that week. Maybe that felt like too much because there's a lot of prep and a lot of digestion um, of the, the outcomes during, during that week also. So maybe you have to narrow that down and not have so many informationals. Um, but you have to maintain your mental focus at the same time that you're maintaining your pace. And so um, you're going to be adjusting the plan as necessary, speeding up, slowing down. But the big thing is, is that you're not going to stop. Um, there's a lot of different frameworks that, that can work for, for how to set your, your plan, um, but then, uh, you have to keep it in your mind that you're not going to stop. And so you're going to finish your marathon and it's going to be, you're going to finish in a place that's actually very good for you and so good for your mindset. Um, so look ahead and then you're going to set a new target. You know, figure out what the, this next week looks like with those, with those adjustments that you just made. Okay, so... At this point, we're gonna break out into a couple of some, some breakout sessions and um, we're gonna have about 20 minutes to discuss where each of us are at with emotional toll and with emotional toil. And so what we'd like you to do is once you get in your groups, designate, somebody needs to designate that they will be the person to report back to the group after we reconvene. And so once we start our discussions, um, we'll go to town and that person will be kind of recording or reporting out, you know, what, what people thought about within the breakout session. And then we'll come back and we'll find out what we all thought. And we'll, then we'll go on with our presentation. Okay, um, I've just uh, adjusted the rooms. I've got everybody ready to go. So um, I'm gonna open the rooms. As Margaret said, there'll be 20 minutes and you'll get a 60 second warning and um, look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you. You're welcome.
Did you have a nice break, Fiona? <laughs> I did. <laughs> Very good. And my internet is showing it's a little unstable, just FYI. I just brought us back. Can I go back? I can't hear you. Lauren, you're muted. Yeah, let me put you back. If you can go back, that's great. Um, yeah. Put me back. I, I was in the middle of something. I don't know there. if I can. There was something about. Well, just something about C-suite. The, the higher the level, the more they seem to be willing to do it. And also they have connections and they hear things that they don't hear things that much of the rest of the C-suite doesn't hear uh, because they have boards and all that. And, and James, you know, you know that you, you work with lots of companies and uh, the CEO is the is, is magical, I think. Always worth it. Always worth the effort to try. And sorry for uh, hitting the wrong button there. <laughs> so thanks everyone for uh, participating. We had a great session in my group, breakout session four. We don't have too much time left, and we still have a little bit of of stuff that we want to run through. So. Can we just quickly, very top line, um, the reps from each group? Can we start with breakout session one? Um, any sort of key takeaways from, from your session? Sorry, are, are we in one? <laughs> I, I forgot which room we're in. <laughs> hey, 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 James, do you want to do it for us? All right, well, I'm going to jump to great breakout session four as the other breakout groups figure out what group they were in. Uh, group, group number four, group number four. All right, so this is Jay. Uh, good morning, everyone. So yeah, we had uh, a fantastic conversation around the emotional toll and navigating the emotional toil. I think some of the, the key takeaways for us is really embracing the journey and embracing all that comes with it and understanding that we're, we're, where we are is where we're supposed to be, right? And uh, Meredith had used the word uh, offended and offensive, right? By getting the decision that, you know, your, your life essentially is going to change, uh, whether you're on, you know, on furlough or whether you're going to be in a true transition. Uh, there's an emotional uh, experience that happens there, but that's okay, right? And it's okay for you to have that and to be able to say that out loud, uh, because that's how we're going to, to uh, start to break through and start to enjoy the journey. Uh, another thing that came out of it, right, is to understand that, uh, you know, in 2020, we all had high hopes and high expectations of what we're gonna do. Obviously, some things were uh, impacted by the, the pandemic, but there's a silver lining that I think all of us are still appreciating, acknowledge, and, and don't diminish those small victories that we probably need to have. It was particularly with us being probably the vast majority of us being high achievers, we still need to feel a sense of accomplishment. Uh, and whether it's not occurring in the corporate world and the job world, 
there's still some other things that can occur personally within your own home or relationships that could be garnered as small victories and that will give you that light uh, to keep your perspective pretty clear. And the last piece of it is, I would say, is that uh, as we celebrate the moments and celebrate the, the transition that I've been going through, uh, that how do we really focus on maintaining what has become really important to you throughout this process in your next assignment. So you don't have to go back to the old way of your life uh, when you were working a lot of hours, uh, having some more emotional imbalance coming back to your family. But, you know, what did we learn and how do you maintain those, uh, those new priorities that are really important to you in your new assignment? Wonderful. Thank you so that much. Cover it? Yeah, thank you so much, Jay. Great, right, uh, thank great, you. Great, group one. Were we, who was group one, Bill? I think group one was Mark. Mark Myers, your group. Okay, Gina, go ahead and report. Okay, okay I, I'm representing the group. Um, so we, we talked about uh, really going through that grieving process and, and, and recognize that that losing a job is a big deal, like, like losing a, a loved one. And um, people who have gone through this or, or uh, who are going through this, they can relate to our, our feelings. So definitely you know, find, find some opportunity to speak to people who can relate to, to, to our emotions. And um, talking to a coach, working, uh, working through the process uh, uh, is, is very important, very, uh, uh, very helpful. So we think that's one of the, the strategies that help us navigate the, the uh, emotional toil. We also spoke about volunteering. Uh, the experience can be very, very helpful because through uh, mentoring others, we can actually get a lot of stimulation and a lot of uh, motivation to help us recall that when we are leader with a company, uh, we have the opportunity to inspire others and really mentor others. Our skills are, not, uh, are still here. It's just that we no longer have the team to mentor, but there are still people around us that, that who can benefit from our skills and experience. And that is something that we should definitely take advantage of by, get, you know, by giving, we can get back a lot more. Uh, we also talk about, uh, uh, Frank shared uh, a comparison which we, we really like is uh, the fact that maybe the way to look at it is not so much to, to think about successes versus failures, but then my last chapter can be viewed as an experiment. And with an experiment, you got findings. You don't need to focus on failures but then there are also learnings that we can benefit from to frame it that way, that could be helpful. Uh, and then uh, uh, lastly, uh, I shared an experience that I went through an ex exercise to create my trophies and medals room to really call out five significant events in my life, that, how I handle it, and then go through the exercise. If I compare those biggest events to the, the career transition I'm going through right now on a scale of one to 10, what is it right now? And it's, it's amazing because I realized that, oh, I thought it's a 10 because it really felt that way. But then when I did a comparison, I realized that, no, this is like at best a six. Look at everything else that I have. It's really not such a big deal. I can get to it and continue to be recalling this comparison and you know, keep my faith that it's going to uh, come to a good end. And I, I, I have to go through this. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. Um, just a quick note that we are getting close to the to the cutoff time, but we're going to keep going um, because this is a really important conversation. We want to hear from the other groups, and we have a few a few more slides. So if you have to jump off, no worries at all. Thank you for joining us. If you can stick around for five ten more minutes, um, we'd like to get to the other groups and then uh, finish up the presentation. So um, over to group two, please. And that was Bill's group. Ah, okay, so <clears throat> hi, James. Um, I'll keep it very high level, but um, we've learned, <clears throat> so we did have a wonderful conversation. We learned that uh, we're sort of at different phases of the journey, but um, you know, the common experience is this is really hard. Most of us have had opportunities come our way. And now this is, you know, a bit of the opposite, having to reach out and proactively go out and find your next thing. So it's a little bit little bit different, a little bit uncomfortable. Um, <clears throat> we've been fortunate enough when we do reach out to our networks that we've uh, gotten uh, very positive receptivity by, by the networks. Even if we haven't spoken, you know, in some cases it was mentioned 10 plus years ago, uh, 
you know, because I think people maybe in this time of COVID are also in a period of self-reflection and a little bit different, perhaps. And so we've been fortunate enough to to be able to to use LinkedIn as a wonderful tool to be able to reconnect with those folks, and then the those folks would help open doors and and other uh, connections to other people, and just sort of land and expand and, and try to go that route. So, you know, the, one of the comments was, you know, I used to do LinkedIn once a year. Now I'm doing LinkedIn once an hour. Um, <laughs> so LinkedIn is your friend uh, and use it, use it a lot. And then, you know, it, it's also, I think Bill made this comment, which is, you know, it's, it is quite surprising that, um, you know, C-level, successful C-level executives are willing to help other people that they see as successful. And that's also very encouraging to know that you can lean on somebody, maybe you worked with them many, many years ago, haven't spoke to them in quite a long time, and really try to uh, re-spark or rekindle that, um, if nothing else, just to check in at a human level, but also to try to, to leverage that as well. But um, it, it all the good news is, at least in our group, it feels like uh, we're, some of us are starting to turn the corner a little bit. And so uh, this has also been very helpful. So thank you. Thank you so much, James. And then group three, Margaret's group. Group three, yeah, so I'm going to speak for, for our group. We had uh, myself, Margaret, uh, Peter, and Stephen. We, we had a great chat um, just at a high level. Uh, we talked about uh, how that initial hit and you, you start taking it personal, looking inside, saying, is there something wrong with me? Why did I lose this gig? Um, those kind of things. Um, and then, you know, feeling the sadness and the guilt and those kind of things. Um, so, and then transitioning from taking it personal to making it personal um, and, <clears throat> you know, doing some reflection, dig into who you are um, and approaching your job search as, as you. Um, and then also one thing that came out was uh, accepting what you can control and also accepting what you cannot, because uh, there are elements of a job search that you just don't have control over, uh, you know, and not focusing on that, but focusing on what you can control. Um, so, you know, the overall idea was, uh, you know, the transition from taking it personal to making it personal. Great. Thanks so much for sharing, everyone. I, I hope you got uh, as much out of that experience as I did. I thought it was an incredibly powerful 20 minutes of, of my time. So um, a few more things that we wanted to, to talk about uh, just to wrap things up a little bit. So um, we have just some recommended resources, and I'm not going to go through these with any depth, but there are some books that we think are uh, really powerful tools about um, transitioning and, and making changes and making some decisions about your life. And we're going to have this posted in the Mighty Network. So please um, go into the Mighty Network. If you have any questions or, or problems with accessing the Mighty Network, please reach out to Fiona. Uh, then there are a bunch of apps. And most of you have heard about these, Calm, Headspace, 10% Happier. I have this thing called Muse, which I just got, which is this device that I put on my head and helps me focus because I find it very, very hard to focus. Um, and some chatbots. I don't know if you've ever played with these chatbots, but these are basically just AI tools that uh, you can connect with and you can talk to and you can vent to and um, they're just available to you if you just are, are in need of, of, you know, some sort of outlet for your emotions. I think it, these are these are some tools that you can access. So again, this will be in the money networks. And finally, this does anybody know who this individual is? So this is Eliud Kipchoge, and about a couple months ago, Eliud Kipchoge ran a marathon in under two hours. And this was something that uh, most pundits thought was, was physiological, physiologically impossible for the human to do. Um, it just meant he was running at about a four minute, 34 second pace for 26 miles. Um, so if you go to your local track and run one lap, you have to run um, one lap in a minute and 10 seconds and do that for 26 miles. So you can't even imagine how fast this guy is running. Um, and I encourage you again to download this and read some of these quotes. These are all quotes from this individual. And he doesn't talk about his speed. He doesn't talk about running. He talks about support. He talks about positivity. He talks about teamwork. He talks about change. Um, so look, he's on this journey as we all are. Um, and you don't get to the finish line on your own. It takes a lot of support, a lot of self-belief, a lot of managing your emotions. And I think um, if this guy can run a two hour marathon in, in less, a marathon in less than two hours, all of us can certainly get to our finish lines as well. Uh, and with that, I'll turn it over to Margaret for some, some final words. 
Well, I see there's a lot of um, information in the chat room. I love that. So please do connect with everybody that's in there. And if you haven't put your, um, your LinkedIn profile in there, please do that when you can. I think the biggest thing that we can do for each other is just to be there. We can help be your rah-rah section. You know, all of us have either run this marathon already or are running it right now. And so everything has changed. Um, the world has changed. The way we get a job has changed. There's so much change and it's really hard sometimes to navigate through all of that in order to get to the mm -hmm. next big and better chapter of your life, of your work life. Mm -hmm. And so we just wanna it reiterate for you that we are there and reach out to any of us. I know Chris, Chris and I and, and uh, Laura and Bill and Fiona, we're just, you know, we're waiting to see who reaches out and we'll, we'll give you whatever we can. Um, but we just wanna help you finish this marathon, however long it takes, it doesn't matter because what you're gonna find is that you're gonna be the, the perfect fit for a company and that company is gonna be the perfect fit for you. If you only have a one-way uh, perfect fit, it's not really a perfect fit. So please do wait for both of those things to happen. And so with that, I just, I just value your time. We value you being here with us and let's get you to the end of your race. Thank you everyone. Have a great rest of the day. Fantastic session, fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Thank you Great very day. much. Thank you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's okay. It, that's <laughs> not a problem. We're going to follow up with everybody, so it's not a problem. Yeah.